Hey guys, I usually get a lot of questions on the painting videos because I really can't go into a lot of the details while I'm painting a lure. So I thought for today, this video is just going to be about those small details that I don't usually cover. Stick with me. All right, well let's start out with the blanks because that's one of the biggest ones is where do you get them? And let's talk a little more about those in depth. Now, I'm gonna admit, before I started painting, I used crankbaits, but I wasn't really into a lot of it. I liked square bills. I liked the 1.5 and the 2.5, but to be honest with you, a lot of times I considered, well, that was a little one and that's the big one. That one went two to three feet, that went four to five. That's about all I really cared about. It wasn't until I started painting them and I really started looking more into them, getting a little more in depth, learning more about them, that I realized there's lots of other ways to go. When I get into square bills though, I still kind of stick with four basics. Still do the 1.5, the 2.5, I also do an S-crank. Now this is a knockoff of a Mega Bass S-crank. Got a lot of good action to it. I really like this lure. Goes about four or five foot deep. About the same as a 2.5. I also like this. A real narrow lure. This is a knockoff of the Spro's Little John style. Technically it does have a rounded bill instead of the square bill, but I'll still call it a square bill. This one's going to go a little deeper. This one's going to get you anywhere from six to eight foot deep. Now when it's all said and done, the S-Crank style and the Spro Little John style have turned into be my two favorite lures to fish with. Those are probably the first two I'm going to grab before I grab the 2.5 and a 1.5. But they all have a place, they all have a use. Most of everything you're buying today all has rattles or knockers. You, I don't, you very fine, very few lures without rattles and knockers. They're out there, but you got to kind of look for them a little bit. Which gets us down to, all right, where do you get your blanks? That's one of the biggest questions I get a lot of. Uh, Barlow's Tackle. Barlow's has always had blanks. They, I saw this year they increased. They've increased the amount of blanks they have, so they have even more of them. So that's Barlow'sTackle.com. Another place I get a lot of my stuff is... Uh, Lure Parts Online. Now Lure Parts Online is again, they've increased the amount of blanks that they sell and I get a lot of my other components from them and we'll get into that here in just a little bit. Uh, Predator Bass Baits is another place I've picked up some of my lures. He has a pretty good supply. There's another place called Dinger. I have not purchased anything from Dinger but I've heard they're very reputable. Which brings us to China. A lot of guys are going to ask about China, and you're going to hear places, ah, it's all a bunch of junk comes out of China. I'll disagree with that. I believe all this stuff right here is from China. Most of the stuff I've been buying, I didn't start out that way, but a lot of the stuff I've been buying lately has come from China. you got to look them over, and you got to know who you're dealing with. That's the part, you, you, it's, it's kind of trial and error. I worked with a company in China called Schultz. Now about the last three weeks, their website just quit working. I don't know what the deal is with that. I have found him over on another area, it's called AliExpress. And AliExpress is kind of like eBay. It's a whole bunch of people selling in one spot. I have not ordered from him yet through there, but if you look for Schultz, uh, I've liked his stuff coming out of China. Almost all the stuff I get from him when I'm buying blanks, they come with eyes for free. Shipping is always free, so you're usually buying blanks like this for under a dollar. You usually have to buy 10, 20, or 30 blanks at a time, but they're usually shipped to you free. And the nice thing with Schultz is I find all my stuff usually gets to me within three weeks, so that's not too bad. Uh, while I'm painting, well, let's get into wraps. Well, that's one that everybody asks about wraps. This is metallic mesh, it's Tool, T-U-L-L-E, metallic mesh, six inch. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. It's in the fabric department. It's considered a ribbon. So it's a metallic 
mesh tool, T-U-L-L-E. It is not metallic. It must be metallic in color because it's, it's, it's not metal. That is one of the wraps I use. Also from uh, Hobby Lobby is this one. This is, this is one I showed you guys. And when I bought it, it had a price tag. And that was it. It does not say what it is. It's a ribbon of sorts. Uh, but I found it in the floral department. They're using it to wrap artificial flowers. I like that one. This one is uh, Ofray, O-F-F-R-A-Y. Another ribbon, narrow. This one I picked up at Walmart. And this was, again, where they have the, the fake flowers, the fake plants. This is used as a ribbon for that. Uh, this one's got a little glitter on it, so you got to really work it a little bit to get some of that glitter off. Uh, that is the three styles of ribbon I use. So one comes as Ofray, O-F-F-R-A-Y, a floral ribbon. That comes from Walmart, and the other two will both come from Hobby Lobby. That's the three styles of ribbon I like to use. Let's go to paints. Uh, I use basically Createx paint. In Createx, I use the opaque, which is just a plain. I use that white, black, or various colors. I also use a pearlized, the Createx pearlized. I really like the effect you get with the pearlized paint. And then I'll also use Createx transparent. So there's three styles there that I'll use. Createx makes other styles, but this is the three styles I like to use. I will also go in to Walmart. And again, some guys say, ah, oh, you can't spray the Walmart paint and it doesn't work. It will, but the Walmart paint is very thick. It always has to be thinned. Most of the Createx, I'm spraying that straight without thinning it 99% of the time. I'm spraying that at 40 pounds of pressure. All right, that's what I usually do my standard spraying with is 40 pounds. When I get into light details, like for a stencil or around the head sometimes, I'll bring it down to 10 to 12 pounds. I don't need nearly as much pressure then. But the... Walmart paint is always thick. It's a craft paint. It always has to be thinned. Because it's a craft paint, the color pigments are a little bigger, and sometimes you can have problems clogging up your gun, uh, your air gun with that. I haven't had too much problem with it, but I like the Walmart paint. It's 50 cents. But more importantly, I like it has so many colors that sometimes with the Createx, you've got to take two or three colors and mix them to get the color you're after. A lot of times in the craft paint, I can find the exact color I want without having to do any mixing. So I will use both types of paint. When I'm painting, a lot of people, the helping hand, a lot of people like to use the helping hand, hold your lure, and that works really well. There's a lot of times I do use that, but for the most of the time when I'm just painting alone, I like to use a small plastic clamp. And I buy these for like a dollar, dollar and a half, at a Menards, which is a home improvement store, like Home Depot or Lowe's. I buy them for about a dollar and a half. I put a hole up here in the handle, and over where I paint, there's a rack, and I can put up to a dozen of those, hang them up in front of me. So if I'm painting three or four or five lures, I can paint this lure, hang it up, grab another, paint that, hang it up, grab another. So I like to use the helping hand. I don't, or the helping hand, but I like to use the clamp. I don't see a lot of people using that but uh, I like it. That's the way I like to do things. I mentioned a lot of these lures come with the eyes, but if they don't, then you're buying eyes. They're always going to come in different sizes, uh, 7 30 seconds, quarter inch. Some will sell them by millimeters, lots of different colors. I love the reds, but sometimes when I'm getting them, I've got yellows and some other odd colors. Some lures you get will have odd shaped eyes. Now, the Spro's Little John body style, this one, or this right here, has a half eye. And I have not, when I ordered these, again from Schultz in China, I received half eyes, but they were white or silver, whichever. I didn't like them. So what I end up usually doing in this situation is taking a quarter inch eye here and then cutting it in half. And 
sometimes you got to cut a few to get them right and that's kind of a waste but if you want the right color eye sometimes that you have to do i have not found a good supplier for half eyes anybody knows any hey leave me something down in the comment section because i'd love to be able to buy various colors of half eyes quit cutting those things in half all the time uh most of my eyes when i'm buying them again these come from lure parts online uh, I like their eyes. They've got a good supply of eyes. These are the 3D, so they're not flat. When you put the eyes on, they always got a little sticky on the back, but that doesn't really hold that well. So what I like to do is I'll put a little drop of glue in the eye socket and put the eye on, and then I'll let it sit for 20, 30 minutes, or it may sit overnight until I come back the next day and put the top coat on. Once you put on that two-piece top coat, it's going to cover that eye and seal it up anyway. So that holds it in, but I like a little bit of glue while I'm doing that. Uh, let's go back. I want to talk a little about the wraps because I do something different there. And that's when I put a wrap on a lure. I've watched a lot of other people. They use a the little alligator clips, which is basically what's on the end of the helping hand. You can take all those off and they'll put... You know, they'll pull those things out and they'll buy a whole bunch and, and maybe put, I might get one out of here, uh, put maybe a dozen of those alligator clips in. They'll take them just like that and they'll run a whole bunch of them all on the bottom to hold them in. I bought hair breadths. I found at Hobby Lobby, I found some hair breadths and I found I've had pretty good luck going ahead and putting that wrap over and then just using a couple of hair breadths at the bottom. You watch some of it, watch, just watch some of my painting lures. You'll see me talk about that, putting those on. Usually a couple of them will do it. It's worked for me. Now, it may not work for you. You may be the alligator clips will do better. But for me, the hairbrush get along pretty well with that. Once we got it painted, we need the top coat. And I mentioned this a few times. I use the Bob Smith Industries 30-minute top coat. I get this again at Hobby Lobby. And by the way, if you're getting all of this stuff at Hobby Lobby, get your 40% off coupon. It's only good for one thing at a time, but if you're going by there often enough, I mean, this is like $10 or $10.99 or something. By the time I take my 40%, I'm in that $6, $7 range. And the nice thing is, seeing as how I went modern this last year and I actually had a smartphone, now I can just take and upload the coupon right here, go in the store, they scan it there, and I don't have to worry about printing one out or anything like that. So pays to go modern doesn't it guys us old guys even go modern sometimes 30 minute you don't have 30 minutes uh it's 30 minutes in the sense that once it's on and once you hang it or you put it on a drum and rotate it a lot of guys rotate these they'll put them on that way you want time for that to harden up and run down i hang mine on the end, you've seen me, I hang mine up. Sometimes I'll put a wire down here to let things run down. That's where I need my 30 minutes so it has time to slowly work its way down. You'll end up a little glob down at the end, but that's why you don't end up with brush strokes or anything like that. And when I'm putting this on, it's just cheap Walmart brushes. Buy 20 or 30 of them for a buck and a half. That's what I use. Throw them away when it's all said and done. But usually I, I, when I mix this up, and admittingly, Everybody's such a stickler as I see. Do you mix it equal parts volume or equal parts weight? And I'm sorry, I put squirt and it's in. I look, I know I've been doing it about a year now, a little over a year. I haven't had one go bad yet. And I fished a whole bunch of these all year and fished them hard. And I haven't seen any wear and tear on the ones that I fished all summer long either. So I don't get as picky about it. I try to get equal parts in, mix it up really good. Uh, Real little small cups. Hey, if you went out ice fishing, as I mentioned in another video, save those cups. If you, you know, if you like to party and do jello shots, save those cups, or you can just pick them up at Walmart for a couple bucks. Mix them up, and that's what I'm using here. When I'm doing lures, a lot of times, the way I figure it is, I'll mix two parts up. I have enough time to do two lures. I can get enough to put two on here, and that's it. If I try for three, well, let's, let's take that back a little bit. If I got a real small lure, a little shad wrap style, or I can be a little faster with it, I might get three done. I don't like to chance it beyond that. Summertime is different than winter. This stuff likes 70 degrees. In the summertime, when this room is a little bit warmer, and it might be up in the 80s, 
I have, a, I, I have a lot longer life in order to get it on. In the winter time when this room is a little cooler and I'm trying to heat it up, two lures is all I'm going to try to do. Otherwise, I'm going to be throwing number three away. All right, so we got it painted. We got a top coat on. Hooks. What do we do for various sizes of hooks? Well, the first thing you're going to need is split rings. A split ring is what you're going to need in order to put the hook on. You will need a split ring pliers. I think I picked mine up at Hobby Lobby, but any of the places like Barlow's or Lure Parts Online, you can buy split ring pliers from them. I believe all my split rings have pretty much come from Lure Parts Online. I think I, I probably did some from Barlow's also, but those two places are where I'm usually getting my split rings. Man, I think that's a number two, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that is a number two. A lot of times, I believe in some of these catalogs, they will suggest what size hooks or what size split rings to use. I use the round split rings to put on the hooks. If I'm putting a split ring up here, I like to buy oval ones. An oval split ring, the weak part is always on the side where the wires meet. So if you put an oval on here, you're guaranteed that your line tie will never end up on the weak spot. It'll always end on an end and that's a good spot on the split ring. So I put oval here and I'll put the standard round for the hooks. As far as what hooks do I use? If I'm fishing a 1.5 or a Spro's Little John, then I'm going to go with the number six hook. I'll do a number six and if I'm putting in just standard round bend hooks, right now I've been using Eagle Claw Laser sharp. I've been buying a Walmart. 25 hooks is like less than five bucks. I can't say I've had any real problems with them. They've done all right. But if I'm putting in a round bend hook, that's what I'm using. You can go to Lure Parts, Barlow's, other places. You can get your hooks there. I don't know if they'll be cheap or not, but they've got them just as well as anybody else does. If I'm using the S crank or the 2.5, if I'm dealing in those, then I'm going to be dealing with a number four hook, slightly larger. And again, if it's round bend, Eagle Claw Laser, uh, Sharp from Walmart what I've been using. For myself, a lot of what I use are extra wide gap hooks. Now, if I use a round bend hook and a fish are just taking a swipe at it, you're probably going to get them with a round bend hook, but you won't get them with an extra wide gap hook sometimes. The extra wide gap hook needs a fish that really says, I want that and is going to hit it. But the extra wide gap hook tends to hold fish that the round bend hook might lose. So it's kind of a trade off. You can say, well, hey, they aren't hitting very good today, so I'm going to use the round bend and I'll probably hook one when I hit him, whether I keep him or not is another. Or you can say, well, they're really biting good, so I'm going to use extra wide gap hooks and then I know when I got him on. I kind of just fish with extra wide gap hooks. I may miss some if they're not hitting it real hard, but I'm figuring I'd rather lose him when he hit it than lose him three-fourths of the way in. By that time, I may have seen him and I thought, holy crap, look what I got on there, and then I lose it. I didn't see him when he was way out there, so if I get him on, I want him in. For here, I'm buying Mustad extra wide gap ultra point hooks, real sharp, short shank. I kind of like that. Sometimes I can increase the hook size. I've taken such as this S crank and where it would take two number fours, I actually use a number four and a number two. Go up to a bigger size hook because seeing how since they are short shank, they won't hook each other. Because you always get the lures and some of these real cheapies you buy and the hooks will hook each other. Normally, if you use two number fours, that's what you have to do here. But if they're short shank, one of those you can increase the size. And I figured, hey, that might increase my hookup rate. So I like to go with a wide gap. Like I said, I may miss a few fish up front. But once he's on, I think I got a better shot. Matter of fact, I've even taken my jigs that I now buy. I'm buying extra wide gap jigs just to see... And I think I saw last year that extra wide gap hook holds just a little better. All right, that's it. That's a lot of the detail stuff. Get out there. 
paying some lures? You got any questions? Leave them in the comments. Thanks for sticking with me.